Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this video I will look at the minimum hardware requirements for installing Windows Server 2016. Understanding what these requirements are will assist you when planning your installation of Windows Server 2016 and by the end of this video you'll know exactly what is required to get Windows Server 2016 installed and up and running. So let's get started. The minimum hardware requirements for Windows Server 2016 are largely unchanged from Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2. The first requirement is the process requirement. Windows Server 2016 requires a 1.4 GHz 64-bit CPU or better. Understand 1.4 GHz should be considered an absolute minimum. Although a processor of this speed is enough to install Windows Server 2016, it will not give the best performance. In the real world, you should always aim for a faster processor if possible. As a general rule of thumb, the faster the processor, the smoother Windows Server 2016 will run. It's also worth noting that Windows Server 2016 is a 64-bit only operating system. There's no 32-bit release of Windows Server 2016, hence why a 64-bit processor is required. Windows Server 2016 will not install onto any computer that utilizes a 32-bit processor. The next requirement is the RAM memory requirement. The amount of RAM required for a successful installation of Windows Server 2016 is dependent on your choice of interface. If you plan to install Windows Server 2016 with a server core interface, you'll need at least 512 megabytes of RAM memory. This RAM must be ECC or Error Correcting Code compliant. For installations of Windows Server 2016 with a desktop experience interface, the amount of RAM required is increased to 2 GB. Again, this should be ECC compliant. Although the memory requirements listed here are accurate for the majority of installations, there is one exception to this rule. If you attempt to install Windows Server 2016 onto a virtual machine and you assign the absolute minimum requirement to that virtual machine, i.e. just one processor core and 512 megabytes of RAM, Microsoft have acknowledged that this setup will likely fail due to insufficient memory. To get around this, Microsoft recommends that you increase the amount of RAM memory assigned to the machine to over 800 megabytes. Following a successful installation of Windows Server 2016, the RAM memory can then be dropped back down to 512 megabytes if you wish to do so. Keep in mind that with any installation of Windows Server 2016, whether physical or virtual, the more RAM you have, the better. The next requirement is disk space. Windows Server 2016 requires at least 32 gigabytes of free disk space for a successful installation. Once again, though, this should be considered an absolute minimum. According to Microsoft, 32 gigabytes is enough disk space to install Windows Server 2016 in server core mode with the web server IIS role. If you plan to install Windows Server 2016 with the Desktop Experience interface, you will need more disk space. Generally speaking, an installation of Windows Server 2016 with a Server Core interface is approximately 4 GB smaller than an installation with a Desktop Experience interface. Keep these figures in mind when choosing your preferred interface for Windows Server 2016. Furthermore, if your server has more than 16 GB of RAM memory installed, Microsoft recommends allocating even more disk space. This additional space is necessary to accommodate larger paging, hibernation and dump files. One final point I'd like to make with disk space concerns your choice of interface. Windows Server 2016 does not support any of the following interface types. IDE, EIDE, ATA and PATA. Fortunately, these interface types are very, very old and any computer manufactured in the last 15 years should support newer interface types such as SATA and SAS. The next requirement I will look at is the network adapter. 
If your Windows Server 2016 server will be participating in a network, then a network adapter is required. When joining Windows Server 2016 to a network, Microsoft recommends that you use an Ethernet network adapter with at least 1 gigabit of throughput. In addition, if you plan to install Windows Server 2016 by deploying it over a network, your chosen network adapter must also support Pixie or pre-boot execution environment. With Pixie, a computer that has no operating system installed whatsoever is able to discover a DHCP server and obtain an IP address. From here, the computer can then connect to the network and download an operating system like Windows Server 2016. The next requirement is the screen resolution. Windows Server 2016 requires a graphics card and monitor that supports a screen resolution of 1024 by 768 pixels or higher. This resolution has been around for a long time and so you should have no problem in finding a graphics card and monitor that supports it. Finally, some of the optional requirements you should consider for your Windows Server 2016 server include a DVD drive, if you plan to install the operating system using a DVD, a keyboard and a mouse, if you plan on administering the server locally, and an internet connection to allow you to download and install the latest Windows Server 2016 updates from Microsoft. That covers the minimum hardware requirements for installing Windows Server 2016. In the next video, I will look at the maximum hardware and virtualization limits for Windows Server 2016. This will involve looking at Windows Server 2016's scalability when deployed in a virtualized environment. I hope that you've enjoyed this tech tip from Will. For more videos, including videos on Windows Server 2016, check out our YouTube page. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to be notified of new videos when we release them. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next Tech Tip.